It wasn't inappropriate crush, but it was, I was crushing on your talent like mad. I, I was stuttering like I am now around you. I... Turns out, you only need one successful run on television to live a lavish life. Everyone knows that Hollywood is a boulevard of broken dreams, but certain actors find their jackpot in one role. And well, they might not need to work another day in their lives. Jen. Yes. Friends is turning 30. And I'm turning 30. And you are turning 30. This is so cool. Isn't that what wild? A coincidence. It's so crazy. <laughs> when you were a baby on that show, you were so mm. advanced. Wasn't you know? I? Your fine motor skills were insane. I was um, an old soul. You were an old soul. <laughs> It's crazy, 30. It is crazy. Those residual checks keep on coming, after all. Join us as we reveal how much dough celebrities roll off their reruns and syndication checks. Number one, Ted Danson. Cheers. We will never get tired of Ted Danson's artistry. He's been gracing us with his on-screen presence for years now, and he doesn't plan on stopping anytime soon. His groundbreaking work was the hit sitcom Cheers, where Ted played the role of Sam Malone for 11 seasons. The actor was the heart and the soul of the show, and there was no surprise that he made millions off the role. But insatiable as ever, he returned for another groundbreaking role in NBC's hit show, The Good Place, which broke all sorts of records on Netflix. The ratings of the show can tell you how much Ted Danson made from the show, and if The Good Place is promised longevity on the streaming platform, he will rack up some more millions of dollars. The actor has also landed a role in NBC's comedy series, Mr. Mayor, and who knows how much that gig will add to his net worth. Today, the actor has amassed a lot of wealth for himself. Certain reports indicate that Danson has a net worth of $80 million and counting. The actor's success story started when he made a guest appearance in another sitcom, Taxi. The director of the show, Jim Burroughs, couldn't give him any other role, so he asked the Charles brothers to consider him for cheer. Danson had to give multiple auditions for Sam, but endurance was the key. Once he finally made it, there was no stopping him. He was quintessential for the show's success, which would go on to receive 117 Emmy acknowledgments and 28 wins. Danson, himself, earned two awards for his acting. As the show got popular, the actor's agents negotiated for even a bigger salary. It is reported that when the show took off, the actor made $500,000 per episode. There were rumors that Cheers would be getting a reboot, but Danson believes that the show's concept wouldn't resonate with modern audiences. But that doesn't matter. The actor doesn't need a reboot to make any more money. After all, just in residuals alone, Danson makes more than $5 million every year. The actor was successful in negotiating a lucrative amount for himself, even more than other stars of his caliber. And well, good for him. Number 2. Tom Kenny, SpongeBob. How much can a beloved cartoon character make? You'll be shocked to know that the SpongeBob franchise is worth around $14 billion in 2024, closing into the profit that big names like Avengers make. That's right. From reruns of the show on Hulu or Netflix to the series of toys that the franchise released, it has become a very lucrative name in the children's industry. However, critics have noted that the heart and soul of the show, Tom Kenny, who voices SpongeBob, hasn't measured up. You see, Tom reportedly makes $50,000 per episode despite starring in the cartoon series since 1999. While it's true that the SpongeBob gig makes the most money for the voice actor, he has other notable roles under his belt. For instance, he was the voice behind Hefferwolf in Rocco's Modern Life, the Ice King in Adventure Time, and its other spin-offs, the Mayor in the Powerpuff Girls, Dog and Cat Dog, and several other high-profile roles. But of course, nothing comes close to his role as SpongeBob. Reportedly, Tom has a net worth of $16 million, and he might even see an increment as SpongeBob is renewed for another season in 2024. However, his fans have noticed that the actor is severely underpaid, especially when the cartoon franchise has done profoundly well for itself. We're yet to see how much Tom Kenny will be making in residuals once the show completes its run, but by the measure of his current salary, it doesn't seem like the voice actor would be racking up millions of dollars. Number 3. Jerry Seinfeld, Seinfeld Jerry Seinfeld is rich, and we are talking about rich with a capital R. According to media reports, the celebrity is very close to becoming a billionaire. And while celebrities of his stature are always stirring several pots to make millions of dollars, Jerry has kept things simple. He doesn't do a lot of endorsements or production deals, and doesn't work like crazy, unlike other actors in Hollywood. 
In fact, most of his income comes from his hit sitcom, Seinfeld, that triumphed over television in the 90s. Thanks to the rise of streaming platforms, Jerry has negotiated several syndication deals with Netflix. So, yeah, every time you watch Seinfeld on the platform, you're bringing the actor one dollar closer to his billionaire status. His residuals and stand-up shows have led Netflix to pay him millions of dollars, and well, the checks won't stop coming in. Things weren't as lucrative, though. For the first season of Seinfeld, the actor was making $20,000 per episode. As the show climbed the popularity ladder, his salary was increased to $40,000 for one episode in seasons two and three. Then Seinfeld became the rock star of the sitcom culture in America, and Jerry knew he had hit the jackpot. For seasons four, five, and six, Jerry made $100,000 per episode, making him one of the most highly paid TV actors of his time. The actor was only starting, though. For the next two seasons, Jerry demanded $500,000 per episode, and for season nine, he was making $1 million for one episode. Yep, $1 million. That figure made him the highest paid person on television at that time. It still wasn't enough to keep the actor around, much to the showrunner's dismay. NBC begged Jerry to return for another season, in exchange for a $5 million per episode salary, but the actor turned them down. You see, he wasn't worried about losing any cash or sleep over Seinfeld. After all, he and Larry David had negotiated for a 15% ownership stake in the show, which was perhaps the best financial decision the duo could take. The show went into syndication in 1998, and reportedly, the actor made $255 million in one go. By this point, the actor didn't have to do much to keep his house running. In 2015, Hulu bought the rights to stream the show for $160 million, making the price of each episode $875,000. It's unclear how much Jerry made out of this deal, but we are guessing millions of bucks. Another deal was equally lucrative, if not more. After seeing how much audience Hulu had racked for airing Seinfeld, Netflix wanted a piece of the cake too. The show is currently streaming on Netflix after the platform paid $500 million for its five-year run. And well, Jerry and Netflix have a working relationship that is mutually lucrative. The streaming company keeps giving the comedian millions of dollars for his stand-ups. For 23 Hours to Kill alone, the comic made over $20 million. It is expected that Netflix will not be sending off Seinfeld anytime soon. And well, who knows? Maybe Jerry would cover Forbes one day as the man who made millions off reruns. Number 4. Bob Sage, Full House Not everyone can live off a single show like Jerry Seinfeld, though. Take Bob Sage, for example. His salary on his hit sitcom, Full House, was criminally low, and to add insult to the already bad injury, his residual checks would shock you. Bob starred on the show from 1987 to 1995, appearing in all 192 episodes spanning across eight seasons. His character of Danny Tanner was an instant beloved, but the show didn't exactly take off. The critics didn't resonate with the story much and singled out certain characters for their choppy acting. However, all of this changed when the show went into syndication and popular networks like NBC, TBS, Nick at Night, CMT, and the Hallmark Channel yearned for its rights. It was almost as if the show was given a new life, and throughout the 90s, it got several reruns. Full House was bought off by Hulu in 2017, before HBO fought for its rights in October 2021. As you can probably guess, the show only became successful after it went off air. This is why Bob Saget and other actors on the show never made enough money off their hard work. There's no exact figure available but the actor himself had complained about the low wages that forced him to work more and more. Talking to an interviewer back in 2010, Bob said that there is no full house money in his bank account. Apparently, the per episode salary was so low that the actor couldn't save anything off his checks. Whatever he earned went into keeping up with this celebrity profile. The salary situation did improve once the show took off in its later seasons. Reportedly, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, who starred as Michelle Tanner in the series, made $1.9 million for the last season of the show. Granted, as the show's lead, Bob would have made significantly more, but he didn't exactly rack millions in his bank account either. This is why the actor was so apprehensive about residuals as well. Before his tragic death in 2022, HBO had already begun streaming the show, so there's a huge chance that Bob would have earned big bucks. However, 
The show's streaming popularity came far too late. We don't know how much the actor made off the show's run on Hulu, but in an interview, he did reveal the actual residuals he got. And, well, the figures aren't for the weak. You'll be disheartened to know that the hard-working comedian made a maximum of $2,000 in residuals. But most of the time, his checks only got him $2 for playing the beloved character. $2? Talking about the insulting checks, the actor said, They buy a cycle. Full House just started a new cycle, so someone, not me, is going to make a fortune. Whatever I get is found money. I hate talking about it. Nothing's what anybody thinks. Once again, we are face to face with the harsh reality of TV reruns. Actors are exploited while networks make millions. Number 5. Jennifer Aniston, Friends Today, Jennifer Aniston has a whopping net worth of $320 million, and it doesn't take a genius to guess that most of her wealth came from Friends, or rather, reruns of it. Post Friends The actress has worked in several movies, but nothing comes close to her stardom as Rachel, one of the most popular characters on the show. Even today, the show is a cultural phenomenon, and let's be honest, who hasn't watched multiple reruns of Friends tucked under their blanket? As long as platforms like Netflix would keep streaming the show, its ensemble, including Aniston, would keep making loads of money. In 1994, Aniston was a nobody when she got an offer from Saturday Night Live. At the same time, she landed the role of Rachel on the show Friends. She chose the latter, and for season one, she made around $22,500 per episode. As the show garnered millions of views, the showrunners increased her salary to $40,000 per episode, and for the next season, the cast collectively demanded $75,000 per episode, with a promise of a raise in season four. It was season five when the show had reached its apex. They weren't going to keep up with a $10,000 increase. This is why showrunners had to pay the cast $100,000 per episode in season five and $125,000 in season six. That's when Friends became a gift that keeps on giving. For season seven and eight, Aniston was racking up $750,000 per episode, and by the next two seasons, she had become the highest paid female actor on TV, alongside her castmates, Lisa Kudrow and Courtney Cox. That was the time when the female stars of Friends were making $1 million per episode, and there was a huge likelihood that the show would also go into syndication, making Aniston millions of dollars. There's no doubt that the television landscape has changed drastically ever since Friends aired decades ago. Even then, the show manages to earn one of the top spots in the most streamed shows on Netflix. In 2023, Friends became the most streamed show on Netflix for a while as the world mourned the untimely and tragic death of Matthew Perry. The boost in its viewership doesn't affect how much Aniston earns in residuals, but as long as the show is watched, the actress would keep receiving checks. It is said that Aniston, as well as her other castmates, make $20 million per year in residuals only. And if they make any special appearances for the show, such as anniversary specials, they rack a similar amount for a single appearance. Not too bad, right? Number 6. David Caruso, CSI Miami There was a time when CSI Miami was one of the most watched shows not just in America but the world. Everyone was mesmerized by the heroics of Horatio Kane, played by David Caruso, who led the elite unit that solved complex and odd crimes happening in the urban jungle of Miami. But ultimately, the show had to be canceled when CSI couldn't foot the high production costs especially when its rating dipped considerably. Guess the audience got tired of watching a reused plotline when the CSI franchise ran out of its brilliant ideas. Even then, the show was a hit, and it was expected that its stars, including David, would make millions of dollars when the show went into syndication. At the apex of the show, the actor reportedly made $375,000 per episode, this is why it is not a surprise that he has a whopping net worth of over $35 million. No thanks to his residual checks, though. With CSI, Miami always rerunning, one would expect that the show's gang is living off those checks. But nope. Shockingly, David Caruso only makes $100,000 per year by cashing those not-so-hefty checks. Yep, no wonder the actor had to seek other roles after CBS canceled his top-tier show. Number 7. Ray Romano. Everybody Loves Raymond. For nearly 10 years, Everybody Loves Raymond was a rating champion on Monday nights, consistently beating the views that Monday Night Football would rack up. 
The show was so popular that it even batted out the number one spot from the fan-favorite Friends week after week. Then came the bad news. While the show was doing extremely well with ratings, the showrunner, Phil Rosenthal, decided to cut its run short. He knew that his writers were burned out, and it was also the perfect time for Ray Romano to move on. The fans would disagree, though. The legion of the show had kept the writers stuck to a storyline that was both authentic and fun. There was no doubt that Ray Barone was Romano's masterful stroke, but the fans had played an equal part in keeping the character popular. At least, there was one good thing that came out of the show. Romano's net worth grew exponentially. It is said that the actor made over $155 million from his appearance in the show. It is unclear how much he made per episode, but his net worth grew in the aftermath of Everybody Loves Raymond's first season. It is obvious that Romano made a comfortable living as Ray Barone, but what we don't know is the amount of stress and pressure that came with it. The actor has been very vocal about his deteriorating mental health, which took a hit once he had to lead a double life. Since the show was loosely based on Ray's real life, it became increasingly difficult for the actor to distinguish between what's real and what's fiction. Thankfully, there's some solace with the residual checks that Romano cashes in. Every year, the syndication of the CBS hit pays the actor $18 million. Considering the wild popularity of the show, the figure is pretty measly. But hey, if Romano becomes careful about his spending, he might not have to work another day in his life. Number 8. Alex Borstein, Family Guy Family Guy has seen 25 years on television, and if the crass humor of the show annoys you, well, you might not be getting the good news anytime soon. According to its creator, Seth MacFarlane, the show isn't ending for a long, long time. The show is renewed for two more seasons after its 23rd season concluded. It looks like the Fox isn't ready to bid farewell to its ultimate moneymaker. So of course, the show's voice acting cast is still on its trajectory to make a couple more millions off the show. In particular, the star actress, Alex Borstein, who voices Lois Griffin, is going to continue her television success, especially after her brilliant run in Marvelous Mrs. Mizell. Borstein has voiced Lois since 1998, during which the show had to be canceled for its low rating. But as the American audience got comfortable with the show's unapologetic humor, it was back on. And as it got successful, Borstein started to make $100,000 per episode, racking up $2 million per year. In royalties for the reruns of the cancelled iteration of the show, the voice actress probably makes a couple of hefty hundreds. However, owing to her whack divorce settlement with her ex-husband, Jackson Douglas, she only gets half of her salary. Talk about hard luck. The couple had gotten married in 1999, a year after Borstein had begun voicing Lois. The divorce was finalized in 2017, when Family Guy had garnered millions of views on Fox alone. This meant that Borstein's salary saw a considerable boost, making Douglas liable for earning off his ex-wife. There was no denying that Borstein was affected in her professional career after her divorce. When the decision of the settlement came out, she was upset that a terrible marriage would take half of her earnings, especially after working so hard since 1998. When the current iteration of Family Guys goes into syndication, which it will for sure, Borstein would still have to share the residual checks with her husband. Number 9. Mark Harmon, NCIS Mark Harmon was one of the best-paid actors on television, owing to his popularity on NCIS. Reportedly, the actor was making $525,000 per episode, earning more than $13 million after each season was shot. Harmon was on screen for 18 seasons of the show before he left the show in 2021. The actor is still attached to the franchise in one way or another, though. From narration in its reboots to filming flashbacks, we're still going to see some of Harmon on NCIS. So far, the actor has made more than $200 million off the show, and you bet he is still racking up millions as he receives his syndication checks. You see, NCIS is one franchise that every age group can enjoy, so it is expected that the show's reruns would remain profitable for a long, long time. Even if Mark Harmon goes out of work in a year or two, he would still be making a considerable amount of money, as low as $20 million. Yep. That's the lowball figure of the checks that Harmon's account receives. Number 10. Kelsey Grammer, Frasier The last two seasons of Frasier made Kelsey Grammer the highest paid actor on television. After all, he reportedly made $1.6 million per episode in the final two seasons, making his yearly income more than $38 million. No finance publication has been able to guess how much Grammer made of Frasier, 
but if we have to take an educated guess, the actor has racked up to $300 million from the show. As of 2024, the actor has a rumored net worth of $80 million, which also sees a hefty boost as soon as Kelsey cashes his residual check. Fraser has been a popular syndicated show, which went off air in 2004. Since then, the actor has been making $18 million in residuals. All right, he is no Jerry Seinfeld or Jennifer Aniston, but those $18 million definitely help Kelsey to live a lavish life, especially when the actor might not get any more lead roles to play. Number 11. David Hasselhoff, Baywatch If you ever want to make a case on gender pay disparity in the television industry, look no further than Baywatch. The fans of the show were horrified to know that the star of Baywatch Pamela Anderson only made $4,000 in residuals. What made the revelation even more disheartening was the amount of money that David Hasselhoff made off the show. Throughout the show, Pamela complained about not being fairly compensated for her portrayal while her male co-stars, including David, raked $100 million for their run. While the actress made about $300,000 per episode at the height of her popularity, the 90s sex symbol eventually surpassed her earnings. If that wasn't enough, the massive disparity continued when the show was syndicated. This is why, in the latter part of her life, Pamela struggled financially. Not David Hasselhoff, though. The actor reportedly earns $4 million each year in residuals. The figure might not seem much, but in comparison to what Anderson made, it is massive. Number 12. Betty White, Golden Girls Golden Girls is a gift that keeps on giving. The popular show has facilitated the livelihood of even its supporting characters, thanks to the residual checks it imparts. Most famously, it was Quentin Tarantino who was able to make his first hit film, Reservoir Dogs, using the checks he had received from the Golden Girls residuals. He had landed the role of an Elvis impersonator on the episode, Sophia's Wedding, Part 1, and once the show went into syndication, Quentin had made enough to kickstart his directing career. Now, one can only wonder how much money the star of the show, Betty White, made in residuals before she died in 2021. Betty played the role of Rose Nyland on the popular show for seven seasons and 180 half-hour episodes from September 14, 1985 to May 9, 1992. Ever since its last season on TV, the show has gone into syndication, making a permanent heart in its audiences. It might sound unbelievable, but the show even has a very ardent Gen Z fan base. To be fair, the show was always a critical wonder. In particular, White's portrayal of Rose Nyland earned her an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Lead Actress in a comedy series for all seven seasons of the show. Betty was only able to win once, but that was enough for her to bargain for a much higher salary than her co-stars. Her salary from the show is still unknown, but it is reported that the actress made $3 million per year from reruns since the show ended in 1992. Quick math would tell you that the actress made $87 million from reruns alone till her dying breath. In the year 2021, Betty's net worth was around $75 million, which to be fair, sounds like a lowball figure. Nevertheless, it is still a lucrative figure for an actress of her stature. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.